We trust them always. We trust them with our lives. We trust them with decisions. We trust them with with um, a guiding us. We trust them with ordering our steps. Pray God. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house and online. We just thank the Lord for one more chance. Hallelujah. We're going to get through okay, and get started into our Sunday school. Praise God. Thank you. We love you. We lift your name up because you are our Father, which are in heaven. And we want to say, Hallow be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done in earth as it is. In heaven. Father, we trust you. Father, we trust you. Father, we trust you. We trust you. We trust you always because you have been our provider. You have sustained us. You have kept us. You the one that did it for us. When others count us out, you sustained us and you kept us and you brought us forward and we're here today because of you because of your love because of your power we are here today and we just want to give it back to you whatever is in our ability god to give back to you lord thy will be done in the name of jesus lord and before we go any first you want to say forgive us for you that have been done and said that was outside of your will, that she did not like, that did not bring you pleasure in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want free, we want free course, hallelujah. We want the atmosphere free so that anyone coming on presence, anyone coming in your house, God, they will feel your anointing and they will see you and their hearts will change so that you can be able to complete, complete the work that you've already started. Because once you died and you got you started a good work in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you for all the word that goes forth today, whether it be in teaching, preaching, or in the songs, God, we ask you to give the glory and let it be a transforming word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. But our morning scripture is going to be coming from um, our lesson text. Our focus works will be from the scripture. Praise God. And that's in Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Till seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seven times seven. Praise God and go ahead and bless him to the ear and feel of his word. And, and you, you're just going further into the lesson. So I read that as our morning scripture. So you have the lesson text. Um, our focus verse is coming out of Matthew, like I said earlier, 18, 20, verse 21 through 22. And our, the subject of our lesson is seven times seven. And just in case you don't have your calculator and your mind is not calculated, so it's 490. <laughs> 490. So if you haven't lived 490 years, okay, mm -hmm. I would just say 490 years. One time a year. <laughs> praise God, praise God. We're talking about one person, okay? Per person. This is per person, okay? Per person. So, so uh, that means you're not finished, okay? So, if you live 490 years, the name is to the end of that seven times, seven, 70 times seven. So, yeah, so I don't know if you calculate it. So uh, the truth about God is that a forgiving God requires us to forgive others. 
the truth for my life, I must forgive others as Jesus has forgiven me. Now, the one thing that we can't truth of God is forgiving God requires us to forgive others. And, and that still goes to the truth of the way you want to treat it. You know, there are just principles that God has established, both natural and spiritual. And even in our natural selves, we look at why would what you do, you want others to, to do. Why am I going to tell my child don't steal? And I steal. It is like, why would I tell uh, my child to, to obey? I don't obey. You know what I'm saying? So it's when uh, you have done it, then you're supposed to pass it down to each other. So because our God is a forgiving God, he requires us to do the same. He is not asking anything of us that we can't uh, do. And so we tend to get selfish and say, you, we want all the forgiving. We want all the forgiving, but we don't want to apply it. We don't want to do and apply it. But God says, in order for me to forgive you, you have to be that way also. I'm requiring that same thing of you. Okay? Um, going further into our lesson, um, our lesson says the lesson, uh, the outline, the kingdom of heaven is like a servant king. And uh, then we're going to talk about the king's servant is ungrateful. And these are familiar passages, these parables are familiar passages that we have heard before, but this lesson is trying to drive the forgiving nature, the forgiving, the, the not being selfish in what you see, you, you give it to someone else. But, you know, and, and there's a saying that um, we heard, you know, when I was a child, it's a loose gander. So do it, do it, do it, do it, do it again. If you're, if you're going to forgive somebody, if you're not going to forgive, then why would you even expect it? You know, you expect it more than you will it. And so uh, we're going to move further into the lesson. Looking at our lesson connection is talking about um, uh, how New York is, uh, at Christmas time is birthday. He's talking about uh, uh, when Ryan and Ashley, they came to Florida um, to spend uh, three days in Manhattan. And, and they loved it. It was beautiful and busy and all of that. And by, you know, by us, most people are being faithful views on the road to New York. So we went to the Manhattan. It is just what they said. Busy, you know, beautiful, it's beautiful in certain parts, uh, but it's busy and bustling. And there's people everywhere. He said one of their friends drove us around town. The traffic was so tight and packed, which is an understatement. Uh, they felt like they could reach out the window and open the glove compartment. <laughs> it's a yellow cab with, with silver bumpers for everywhere. The bumpers used to be, used to be yellow, but it's prepared. They find out the bumper people and stuff like that. And so it says here, one of the highlights of the trip was a little shopping trip to Chinatown. And, it, and, and so it said, Ryan wanted to see a baseball cap and stuff. So his friend was trying to tell him that. Um, Go to Chinatown, you, you negotiate the best deals, and that's how you do it. You don't just pay the first when they say it costs this, negotiate down. But then he told them, when you negotiate, then you, if they don't go with it, then you can leave. Or you say you're going to leave, and then that may cause you to, to change the price. Okay? But what happened is, uh, um, this, this paragraph says they'll sell for high, but you offer low. They'll say no, you walk out. Then you meet in the middle. Okay, that's the gist of how we negotiate. They, that was how the game was played. Ryan gave him a shot. Try it. He walked into a shop, saw the baseball cap on the shelf, and asked how much for the Braves hat. The person said, 20 bucks. Will you take 15? And the guy said, 20. So Brian Ryan said, sold. He did 
he didn't want to play with walking out and seeing if it was going to go down. See, everybody can play the game of, of, of you know, hustling or, or trying to associate it and uh, price it down and stuff. We, we see that here, you know, going downtown. You know, people do that. I know people that do that. And, and but I'm not a big negotiator like that, but okay, I'll, I'll give you two. Tell me, no, it's still the same price, then I don't want to be embarrassed, you know? <laughs> so if I leave, I don't want to be coming back. Say, okay, 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 then I take the price anyway. <laughs> so it's just, everybody is not, everybody's not savvy like that. But if you are, you know, you know how to negotiate, you have the power of negotiation, you know, so be it. But it says, maybe next, it said, maybe next time. Everybody wants to pay as little as possible to get as much as possible. Which is true. Everybody like a deal. Everybody like to sell. Okay. But it says here, Peter was no better at the game than mine. If Peter walked into the store, saw Jesus standing behind the counter, and give me a picture, give me a picture. Okay. Standing behind the counter. Mercy was sitting on every shelf and on the counter and on the racks and in the windows. It looked like mercy was just everywhere in the shop. But Peter knew Jesus. He knew how much Jesus valued mercy. So rather than insult Jesus by asking to pay less for it, he offered Jesus above the asking price. Okay? The rabbis down the street were selling mercy for three bucks a day. Okay? They taught if a brother sins against you, God calls you to forgive him three times. After that, you're off the hook. Okay? So that's the year, you know, this, this picture is giving me saying that this they sell in mercy for three bucks a day. So after that three bucks, you're off the hook. You don't have to show mercy after you gave it three times. Okay? He said, but Peter knew Jesus to be more merciful than most. In fact, he was more merciful than everyone. Peter opened up his wallet out three bills and then three more and one more for good measure. He offered Jesus well above the actual price. <laughs> Say, Jesus, then, then now here comes the question. Jesus, if my brother sinned against me, how many times should I forgive him? Up to seven times. Because that's what, how much he had. You see what I'm saying? Up to seven. So it's like I gave triple what the rabbi has been selling for. I gave triple. So that must be good enough. You want me to be merciful, Jesus? Can do. Seven times seems mightily merciful to Peter, especially since the going rate was three. So the rabbi is selling the three because they offer seven. I think I'm well above what is required. So I'm doing good, seeing how we degraded ourselves and we can get good for the Give ourselves a pat on the back. Jesus took a glance at mercy all throughout the shop of his body, not seven here, seventy times seven. And then they said, you know, now we get into the parable. Get into the parable. So even though he asked, but see, the whole point was to put the number on it, put that he thought he was asking and, and giving an abundance. Jesus said, no. Your, your abundance cannot match mine. And that's the one thing you got to hear try to get. Your abundance does not match Jesus' abundance. It just don't. And so what Jesus requires is above and beyond. But you can't do anything without God. You can't do this without God. And the lesson is going to show that the lesson lets us know we are human and things in the field and all that. But we're going to get there. Um, and it's going to show that forgiveness is not about your feelings all the time because you hurt you when know, you hurt, you just hurt. But the feelings go beyond, the forgiveness go beyond that part, that part. He said, the kingdom of heaven is more so good than I'll give you mercy. I'll burn here. Jesus began in Matthew 18 23. He said, Therefore, is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain which would take account of his servants. 
the king decided to review the account books. Okay. Account books. Okay. That's his job. And he wanted to see who owed him money and how much they owed. Then it was up to his collection department to demand payment for all debts. That accounting audit revealed a debtor who owed him ten thousand pounds. Now it said a, a talent was a measurement of weight in silver or gold, and and we don't know how much. Exactly how much ten thousand talents might be in today's economy. It said, but it would be in the million dollars. Okay. The amount the debtor owed was so great he would never be able to pay the debt he owed because it was just too great. And and we've had that. And thank the Lord for you know debt forgiveness in some cases and, and some people ended up filing bankruptcy if over too much. Some people lost their job, lost everything. Rather than sit, they filed bankruptcy, you know, and that gives them some type of relief from the debt. But this, and especially with that, is such an astronomical uh, amount that there's no way when you look at it, I can pay it back. Five dollars a month is just not going to pay. Okay? It says Jesus and his audience knew what that meant. For the man in the cabinet. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold. This is what he expected. This is what it looks like when he didn't pay the debt. He was commanded to be sold, and his wife and his children were all his own. And then the payment would be made. Once that it was they all him, his family, and everything he owed, he owned was to be sold. And whatever they get from all of that, they, they, can you imagine there's a price on your head? If you don't pay the debt, I'm going to sell you. And what I, whatever I get. So who, who owns you like that? Who, who owns you like that? You know, we know back in, in slavery times and how that looked back in slavery times. But in today's time, who, who owns you like that? But they can say, I'm going to sell you and get my money. That's a whole nother lesson of how, you know, people, you know, you, you know, in the streets, those are pimps and things like that. You understand what I'm saying? And they sell it to people to make money off of it, okay? And some will hold things over your head and say, this is what I want you to do, and this is going to pay your debt. So you stay with me for a year, two years, and do this, and this is going to pay off your debt. And not understand. Some people, they've been manipulated in their minds so much, they feel they have to. You know, so they succumb to being owned by someone. And so that is how it looks today. Okay? Um, so here, it said, Jesus Okay, uh, um, and the payment made. Since the servant couldn't pay, the king sentenced him and his family to slavery. And demanded all their possessions be sold and the proceeds given to the king. Okay, unfortunately, this didn't come close to paying the full debt. Slaves at top price were sometimes sold for a talent. One each, but usually they were sold for a tenth of that one. And remember looking at how much we talk about ten thousand pounds. So that wouldn't have even touched it. Okay, the king had compassion and chose to make the servant. It says here. In one last plea for mercy, the indebted servant failed to his knees and gave him another time. Now, in the next sentence, you see, now you pay it for more time when you know time is not what you need. Money is what you need because you cannot fulfill this debt in whatever allotted time they give you. 
but you have no way to get the money back. That made no sense. All the time in his lifetime, good time to do nothing. But suddenly, don't you know Jesus is a sudden God? That's why you tell people, you know, uh, joy comes in the morning. You've been making fuel for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You don't know what that suddenly looks like and how fast it's going to come. That is what, you know, we're trying to encourage these people to go through with this heavy. And you tell them, and hang on. And you pray for them. It's like, hang on, hang on. Because you don't know what that breaking point, you don't know what that breaking point looks like. You don't know when Jesus is going to touch you and change everything. You don't know. It could be a word that comes in the morning and that word changes your life. He can speak peace. Remember, in the storm, Jesus spoke peace. Peace be still. Just that little phrase. Everything comes and everything settles. So you don't know when God is going to bring that one word that says peace. And, and, and so if you give up on this side, you would never even know what he could have done on the other side. So therefore, you have to hang in there and trust. Father, I trust you always. I can't do life without you because I trust you. So if I'm waiting on that one word, I'm waiting on that thing that creates a suddenly deliverance in my situation. It's coming. So when I trust you, I'm going to stay until the deliverance comes. I don't know what it looks like, but God got a suddenly. He does things suddenly. When the day of Pentecost, is that suddenly there was a sound. When they were waiting for something, they didn't know what they was waiting for. They said, you're going to be, he said, you're going to be in tune with power. But what does that look like? Nobody's ever had it before. But suddenly, suddenly, when Noah was with the, the, uh, the ark, when the door shut and, and God locked the door, suddenly it started raining. Tiny trickles. Who knows how it looked? But they didn't know what, what's rain, what's rain. But suddenly it happened. And they couldn't do nothing about it. Suddenly, God has suddenly for everybody if you trust them and step. Just hang in there. Trust his word. Faith brings about suddenly circumstances, suddenly responses from God. It says, but suddenly, okay, it says Jesus' story took a surprising turn. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Okay, so when this indebted servant fell to his knees and begged for more time, you remember the message from the other Sunday when he had this Owen's grief. She says, soul cry. There's a soul cry that comes, and that creates compassion from, from on the other side. So we have a soul cry to God. He hears the soul cry, and he creates suddenly with a soul cry. This soul cry. Uh, uh, brought about a sudden response from the king. Okay? Just like that, the debt was gone. Just like that. Just like that. The king did not mock him. He forgave him. Okay? The king felt compassion for this man and didn't just lower his debt. He forgave him. He didn't just say, okay, 50% off. Go ahead. I'm going to give you more time to take up 50%. That's what you no, he just let it all go. Yes. With that said, um, does that forgiveness or trust to be in my person in the same kind of situation? Say that again. Does that forgiveness completely restores trust in, in, in terms of that type of situation? No. Trust is different. Forgiveness and trust. See, there's a trust is built. You gotta build that trust. But you can forgive somebody, but just because, and I always use this in this depiction. I always use this depiction and say, you know, I family members who love them, you know, okay, you can come around and 
had Thanksgiving together to some other five loans to eat. I'm not gonna give you my purse. I'm not gonna just sit my purse right there. But don't take away my love for you. You understand what I'm saying? They don't take that away from you. But if you have to change the spots, the trust, the trust factor comes with the change of spots. If you still doing the same thing, I, I'm gonna see the same thing that walked you into it before. I forgive you. I'm not hoping that I get you, but if you don't change the spots, okay, you are who you are. And when people show you who they are, you believe them. That's it. You just believe them. But it don't take away the fact that when you hurt me, I I, I forgive you. I mean, because I, the forgiveness is for me. The forgiveness takes that out of me where I'm not holding you here. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not bound by what you've done to me. I release you from what you've done to me, but I'm still not going to put my hand in your hands for you to do it again to me. Trust is different. Yes. And you know, the, the scripture says, the scripture says, know them that is yeah. labor among That's you. It. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with love. It's understanding and you are facing reality. Mm -hmm. okay. Everybody has weeks and strengths, mm -hmm. and, and if they're the struggle with that, know that. Okay. And then don't um, expect something that they cannot produce. Right. You know, so you know, and then the Lord bring them further, and you will know that mm -hmm. at that juncture. Mm -hmm. But knowing them that they were monkey, then uh, it, uh, uh, I told somebody, uh, forgiveness can be instant. Mm -hmm. But there's some things that need a healing process. Mm -hmm. And that's not saying anything to do mm -hmm. against the forgiving, the forgiving heart. Healing comes after the affliction or the wound. That's a process, mm -hmm. but forgiveness has already been placed. And love never moves. So a lot of people have to distinguish that's what true. that is. Yeah, the mm -hmm. two. Because some people say you didn't forgive because you didn't have I never forget which which is uh which said really helped me. He said, see the scar on my hand. I remember getting it. Mm -hmm. I know what I was doing when I got it. I know how I felt when it happened. But the key thing is when I touch it, it don't hurt me. So forgiveness can come and a memory is in a memory back. So that's how we use things sometimes as a step stone, as a learning lesson. Right, right. The learning experience because we have a memory bank, but it has nothing to do with right. giving for the or not. A lot of people can use this. that. Right. We we not we don't get a teacher because we forgive people. Some things are lessons. And when you actually say the scripture says, no, then that labor among you. You don't if someone stole, if you had someone that supposed to deposit money and you stole the money and didn't deposit it, you forgive them and they 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 say I'm sorry, you know, or whatever. And, and I'm not gonna do it that way. They may not have to say sorry. However, you don't give them the next deposit because you're saying, well I forgive them so I want to prove to them that I forgive them and you give them the next deposit. It, you know what I'm saying? It, it don't work that way. It's a process. That's a process. That's a process. And then if they do it again well, first of all, you're still in the 70 times seven, but you're foolish. God gives us wisdom. There's still wisdom that go along with whatever we do. In all things, we have to have wisdom because we have to acknowledge God. Yeah, that's it. You acknowledge him, and he will tell you how to handle this situation. And I love what she said. The rest of it is process. Trusting is a process. Building trust in people that have burnt you is a process. It's a process. But healing, we just saw that there's a suddenly, God brings on suddenly thing. Forgiveness, you can suddenly, you know what? I can give you. I gotta heal. Give me my healing space. Gentlemen. And that was my point because the way you said it, and the way you said it now, how people try to Also, the other side of forgiveness is 
would give people have their criteria that they think is good to say. <laughs> and then what happens is like, well, I don't give me no option. So, you know, I mean, even though God requires us to do it, that's not what I'm saying, but I still get my free will too. Right. So forgiveness is my option. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it the right way, but you're telling me how to do how it. How to do it means not to be stupid because people take advantage of hurt folks in that manner and, and, and they think anytime I don't think they're supposed to help them. Even though we have a protocol, there's criteria, there, 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 there are things you gotta follow to do certain things for certain people, even in the church world. And we can't just do it because you think it's supposed to help you. That's a blanket statement. And somebody that's in the might both vote for that. But you have to have wisdom behind that to give us, like you said, that we're telling you, you gotta have that wisdom. In other words, even if they do apologize, I, you're sitting there with $20. I take it off the desk. You see me do it. Did you take my $20? Yes, I did. I'm sorry. You got to forgive me. Yeah. Are you gonna leave that twenty dirty to me? No. <laughs> because you learned from that mistake. Right. And you learned from that in your heart. Let me not put them in a situation where they'll steal, but let me let not put myself in a position to where I hold it against them. I don't want to put myself in a bad position either. And I'm saying this because I've seen it. I'm saying this because people have tried to guilt me. Because they'll try to guilt you if you're doing stuff with you, you can say, look, I'll help you. But this time, I want to see the bill that we pay so that we do it for them. Right. I mean, this stuff is trust the very fast of strong. And so that's what that's what I mean. Because I don't want to see saints get been wounded or hurt or feel right. guilty because somebody say, oh, y'all supposed to do this, y'all supposed to do that. But we got options. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, you know. That's it. That's it. Uh, I have a like to say, Forgiveness, I is my choice. I forgive you, but if you don't get the right to tell me that you forgive me, this is how you forgive me. Or, or he can go in and prove, prove that you forgave. You, you understand what I'm saying? And, and I don't have to uh, uh, prove. Um, here, going a little further. Um, Further is and just like that, like you get the going to say that I'm looking at the line that said just like that, the dead was gone. It says just like that. And it's like she said, forgiveness is in forgiveness. I I because and I'm learning to do that and speak it in my spirit, Lord I forgive you. You know, quickly because dwelling on things, you start to get and the seed. And I, I I try to work on it. And, and guess what? This comes from maturity. And this comes from learning and knowledge. And, and, and when you've been through a lot of things. And so if you don't learn from things you've been through, then what's the use of going through? You understand know what I'm saying? You, you, you make the best out of going through. You don't just take situations and let it be a waste. Nothing God allows for us is a waste. It's for our good. The Bible says it's for our good. So we have to take everything that comes our way and make use out of it. So, so, but the learning process has been say, you know, in my spirit, I may not say it to the person, you know, I forgive you real quick, but in my spirit, go ahead, go ahead and forgive me. And I'm just gonna bless you anyway. I'm da, 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 because I don't know the, the seeds of the creator root tell the story. Taking a root and being embedded, you know, getting the ground, you know, that's what they're talking on, on the, the soil, you know, going by the grass. And I don't want that to start rooting in my soil. You understand? So, Lord, help me with the process now of healing and, 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 and trusting. Help me with the process. But I forgive them because I don't want to carry them. That got me. I'm carrying them with me on everything. And I just, 
for you to do that. So here it says, what overwhelming joy the servant felt. The crushing debt was gone and he and his family were safe and his property was secure. They were saved. Now that, that's the statement right there. See, see how the saved look like. Saved, when you know you've been saved, it brings a joy. It brings something with that. When you know you've been saved, God has delivered me. Oh my God. He said, thank you, my king. I can never receive a greater gift than what you gave me. What joy, what rejoicing. Oh man, if anybody know when, you know, he, he, Emmanuel got, got somewhere in her student loans were, 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 were forgetting. You know, the, the student loans don't come with it. <laughs> but there is a peace that comes with you forget when somebody say I'm writing that off and you're gonna have to pay it no more. It's not against me, they wrote it off. You understand what I'm saying? You talking about joy. I don't know nobody that how it said here one of the questions that how would you respond if you were forgiven of a debt you knew you could not pay? Anybody how would you respond? If you were forgiven, anybody want to tackle that question? Wow, that, that's it, that's it, that's it. And so it says, um, God will forgive, will forgive our debts. This is a snapshot of the mercy of God when he forgives all our sins. Our sins are not the debt we owe to God, okay? Our debt of sin is so huge, we can never repay it. We can never repay the debt of sin, okay? Because we can't pay, we face great punishment. But God in his great compassion forgives us when we come to him and freely acknowledge we have no means to pay. Thank God he forgives the debt we can never pay. And we know that song. He paid the debt that I owe. I owe a debt I could not pay. I need someone to wash my sins away. But now I can sing a brand new song. It's amazing grace. Cause he paid a debt that I could never pay. So thank God he forgives that, okay? And it says, it, I'm going back, it says, but God in his breaking hand, compassion. One thing uh, that I'm seeing here, our sins is like a devil, y'all. What that servant did, and we're going to go look for it, what that servant did was give the soul cry and say, give me, uh, have mercy on me. Give me one more chance. Give me more time. Give whatever it was taken. And so when Jesus forgives our sin, he, he died on the cross. This is what I wanted to say. He died on the cross to forgive the world. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That he should have should believe in it. To not perish, but have a everlasting life. So God did it. It's finished. He said it. But in order for you to obtain that, you got to ask for it. And there's some people believing, well, he did it already, so I'm already forgiven. You know how the, the last of the and all of that? He's already done it. He's already forgiven me. It's already happened. So I'm forgiven. So I just keep on going in, in, in my way and acting the way that I act. Because I'm already forgiven. No, you have to ask for it. That's what repentance is. You got to repent. You got to ask for forgiveness. It's not just thrust upon you. You got to ask for it. Then he freely gives it. Like with the storm and the, the, the example of the storm. He went into the store and saw it all, saw it all there. You gotta go to the store to get it. You gotta go to him to get it. It's available, but you got to ask for it and get it. It said this story also gives us insight.
insight into how great our sins are from God's point of view. These are debts you can never pay. Many of us think of ourselves as pretty good, and we may be from our limited human perspective. And I already told you before I got saved that I knew I did what everybody told me to do, and I said, Lord, forgive me. You know, okay, I'll be pretty represented. But that little nugget on the inside thought that, you know, I, I was pretty, I follow all the rules. Hey, I'm pretty good at I can tell you, I'm pretty good at So I follow all the rules and, and do what people tell me to do. I try not to give nobody no problems and, and all this kind of stuff. So guess what? I'm not as bad as that. I'll never say that. I didn't consciously think that because I wouldn't. That's not me. I wouldn't even think like that. But that seed that's down in it, that 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 grades you, it grades yourself. It says, I'm not that. So therefore, that little seed was blocking and hindering my receiving what God had for me. Because somewhere in there, from my human, limited human perspective, I'm not that bad. We think we're better than most people in our world. It said we might not be great saints, but we're not great sinners. Uh -oh. I'm not a great sinner. You understand what I'm saying? But you got to move that and say, but I'm a sinner. I'm in sin. That Lord forgive me because I am a sinner. Don't compartmentalize it. Don't 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 say but I did. but 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 I I need it with no less. It said we tend to minimize our own sin by thinking it's not that bad. I'm not drunk. I don't sleep around. I'm so my sin is not that bad. But you cut it. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? You covet. You 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 you're still stealing. You 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 you're talking. You're running people down. You're treating people bad. You, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, there's some people that that they look nice, everything is nice, but then behind the scenes, they're cutting people up. That, uh, but you don't see. You don't see it. In your face, they got on all the clothes. And what does that say? It got on all the sheep clothes. Got on all the sheep clothes. However, we have no accurate sense of the number of times we have failed to follow God's word. How many times have we failed to do what God has told us to do? God has given us instruction and we compartmentalize it. We say we're going to follow the instructions, but I'm going to strategically set up how we're going to follow the instructions. God says, go straight and they go detours. We make a detour here and they come back to the straight line. Make another detour and come back to it. But I'm on the path. But I'm still on the path, but we can make all these detours and God did not go to straight the detours. You went off the path. You decided, I'm going to make it easy for myself to follow God's instruction. So I create a way for me to follow God's instruction in my people's mind. Um, I'm going to do it this way. God said, go straight. But I'm going to do it this way because this way is easier. It's too hard to go straight. It's, it's difficult to go straight. It takes me out of my zone. It, it, it messes with my flesh. I don't, flesh don't like to be inconvenient. Flesh don't like it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to convenient my flesh, I'm going to comfort my flesh, and then get to it, and then say, see, I still did it, God. I still did it. I still did it. Did he really receive it? Did he really receive it? I still did it. I still did it, but did he receive it? That's sin because of this. But our remembrance of sin, like is not that bad. So you're thinking I still did it, but it, was, so it wasn't that bad that I did it in my way. But I was still accomplished. However, we have no accurate sense of the number of times we fail. 
No matter how we feel about our sins, God is holy. Sin. He is holy. Uh, he is a holy God. That's what this generation is 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 eliminating. They're eliminating the holiness of God. He we bring him down to a level. We bring him on to 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 fit God because we're trying to get such an understanding of God, and we never will. We want to make it make sense to all of our senses. Make God make sense. And there's a, you know, that's why we have all of these different versions of the Bible and different things like that. And I'm not saying you can't re use those those versions to research it and, and get a better depiction of that. I'm not saying that at all. But we are so caught up in knowing, 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 knowing. And we will never know God. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So if that is the case, that's the word of God. If that is the case, how are we going to ever get to the place where we totally understand him? Some things is just do it because I said it. And whatever I do after you do it is my will. Do it because I said it. But we trying to understand him and trying to know him. That is this generation. That is the generation. We moved away the holiness of him. We moved the greatness of him. We moved because you people can back. That's what I always say. At one point in time, people wouldn't write on churches. They thought the church was such a holy place. They wouldn't come and say any and everything in the church. You didn't have people coming in the church and shoot somebody. You didn't have nobody. The church was a sanctuary. If you could make it to the house, then people respected. Oh, you in God's house. It had nothing to do with the denomination or anything like that. They just felt you was in God's house, so I'll wait for you to come out the door. It was a little bit of respect. This generation has lost all of that, there's the, the sense of it, the sense of the holiness and the majesty of God has been depleted. Jesus. It's like we are like the poor servants owing a debt of 10,000 talents and unpayable debt. Our only hope is for our gracious king to have compassion on us and announce, I forgive your debt, you owe nothing. The penalty for our un our unpaid sin is eternal death and separation from God in hell. That is the penalty. And guess what? A lot of people don't bring that up. They just keep talking about the understanding of God, the loving God. And yes, he does. Because the loving God provided us a way to miss this eternal death and separation. He gave us the choice. A loving God gives us choices to miss hell. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and that where I am, you may be also. He created mansions for us. He has an eternal life with him for us. So, but this loving God said, I give you the choice, but choose life. I gave you the choice, but then I'm going to help you cheat it. Choose. I'm giving you the answer to this test, okay? The, the choices are death and life, but choose life. I'm just going to tell you, okay, you, you got your choice here. You know how we, we play games, you know, of the multiple choices. Okay, you got multiple choice, multiple choice. What's, what's your choice? What's your choice? But see, as the facilitator of the game, I'm supposed to let them choose. Jesus is the facilitator of this. He's the author of this and the finisher. So he said, okay, here's the game. Like that. My Lord. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. Door number one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He taught us what to choose. But if you don't listen and do it, there's a penalty for not doing it. That's what this loving God then he, he, was, he wouldn't be just if he didn't have a penalty and a gift. Everything comes with a gift and what they said, gift and gift. You know what I'm saying? The good and bad. He, 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 you know, you got a gift and you got a penalty. 
It says, all we can do is bow our knees to our king and plead for mercy. When we do, we are sure to find a king gracious and good, ready to forgive. See, that's what it is. He brought forgiveness. He did it up at it, but he's ready to give it to you. But he needs the soul cry. He needs that soul cry that says, I want it. Forgive me. This is me. I let y'all on the altar with no buts. Hey, God. No buts. No buts. No buts. No buts. The devil got hauled out of him. He'll pile you up with buts. You, you, you can, oh, come, but do, but I yield, but say yes, but oh, God, and we understand the English language when you use the word, but what do you do? You negate everything before. You negate. So if you tell God yes, but you just negate your yes. God, help us, Lord. Help us to take the buts out of our thought process. The buts out of our yielding. The buts out of our conversations with God. Help us to move, you know, Jesus was sinless and didn't deserve to die. But he willingly died in our place. God said his death would be a substitute for ours if we turn to Jesus in faith. The word faith is such a, a, a small, small five letter word that carries such a power packed uh, a reward. Faith takes away the what? You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Faith will step in and when the butt starts coming up, but you know, faith says, do the do the earn, I believe that. Faith calls you to move when now that the first part of the sentence is no, no, you know, that it, it's like that, 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 that hurts you. Look back into you. Get up. You can get up. Now you can use the butt. But I believe God. And now you gave all the heart. Ah, you understand what I'm saying? You put the butt in the right place. Ah, with the right thought process. Ah, the butt. You use the butt with the right thought process. Okay? You, 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 you. Uh, you can't do that. You ain't qualified. You, 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 uh-uh, you feel this. You feel this. Uh, you could have said, kids, here. You got a lot of plans. You can do, you can, you know what you can do to check that. You got the right to check that. Mm-hmm. No. But I believe God. But I believe that all things work together for my good. You understand what I'm saying? The cross is all about Jesus paying the debt we could never pay. That's what the cross is about. The cross is about paying the debt that we could never pay. That's what the cross is about. He did something that we could never pay. Glory to God. The king, I'm at uh, the outline two, the king's servant was ungrateful. The story again took a surprising but unpleasant turn. Our friend, who was just forgiven of his unpayable debt, went out and found one of his fellow servants. Okay, now see, see, now sometimes. If it's not a matter of the heart, we forget quickly. We forget quickly. We we want our instant gratification. It's about our gratification. And that's what we gotta be careful of. Because that's what happens. That's what's happened to a lot of churches. 
like today. A lot of people are coming in for their instantaneous gratification, but they don't want the part that literally changes you. The part that says, I'm going to make you a new creature where your old things are passed away. You just want your gratification. I want to be healed today. I want my finances changed today. I want this, I want that. So they look for the instantaneous. Mm. Now, there, before I go any further, there was another question that was posed here. <clears throat> that said, why do we see our sins as small, but others as great? How does God see our sins compared to other sins? And so my question when I was reading that it is this judgmental. It's this judgmental. When you see, you don't see your sin as something, but you see their other sins as so great. Is that the judge that judgmental? Is that you know, I'm, I'm that I'm asking that I, that 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 scene and that photo. Mode in their eye, you know, you like the bean. Right. Now that's crazy. A big old bean, that, that's it. That's oh, it. Bean. Right. It, 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 it. Now, there's something that the Bible already did judge this. The Bible already did. Sin is sin. You see, skill me. Boom. It is sin. I don't have to judge you. You know, it is what it is. You understand what I'm saying? But when we start looking and saying, mm, that I'm better than that, least I didn't do that, least I didn't, least I didn't, least I didn't. And you start treating people based on their sin. You, if you understand when you start reacting to them, they're coming into the church and you can't see them as a soul. You can't see them as being drawn to Christ. Everything you do is, ooh, why are you in here? We saints in here. How dare you come in here like that? You understand what I'm saying? That's where I'm going with that. Yeah. Thing is, is 
you don't want to have that part of second guessing yourself when it's time to help somebody else. Right. You don't want to have that kind of thought. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm just going to say to you, right? so now you got to fight that. Mm -hmm. So all, the, all because if you want us, so the thing is, is what you got to say is, hey, the word does not return to God void when it goes out. So when you try to help somebody and they don't accept your help, I did what I could. So I, they can't say I didn't try. Right. And so you got to go there and put that in your mindset that they cannot say I didn't try. But do you hear me just say, do you hear me just say the part where uh, there is a penalty? You see, Jesus, it's, it's, it's literally, the, it's your, your, your uh, explanation is literally talking how God is looking at all of us. Because he said, I told you don't do that. I said don't go that way. I knew what's going to happen. And then a lot of people who disobey, go down their route, and they come back and say, God couldn't keep it. You, you know what I mean? Now, how he, oh, there go the church. See what the church do? That's why I don't go to the church. They don't blame the whole church because they were left. You, you, you see what I'm mean? saying? So, so God still says, as long as I'm giving them mercy, I'm still giving them a chance. And if they now after they went down that road, they're gonna feel what they feel because it was the penalty of what they did. But in the interim, in the middle of a penalty, they realize they come to themselves. My hand is still outstretched. When they come back, see, we still haven't passed the 409 times. We still haven't passed that point. You got to pray. You can't do any of this. And see, you now you're proving the point of I can't do this without God. I, in my own flesh, I got a lot of ways to handle some stuff. But because I got to surrender this flesh over to God and allow him, but we further in the lesson is going to talk about something which you which you start with your text saying after the other one. I love it because it's just real I love it. And that and this is exactly in the equal strength of the heart of seven times seven. Mm -hmm. Because dust takes God to say for because once that happens, you try to help the church to come back. Turn on you, mm -hmm. then yet you be like, uh, you yet you gotta forgive. And that forgiveness is so powerful because it just doesn't, it, 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 what it does, if you don't forgive them, then it holds you. <laughs> you see, so it's a powerful thing where, so as so as much as we able to forgive, it frees us. It frees us to keep on more praying for them and, and not forgive them, but keep you going, you keep you keep free. That's, you know, you want to stay free. And so that's, so this is, a, I love this. Thing. But I was, I was, when you asked earlier, uh, sometimes, right, I say there's some people that have uh, forgotten what God has done for mm them. -hmm. And here is they came in and Lord saved them, filled them with the Holy Ghost. And now they see people coming in and now they get just out on them them because they got what God did. What God did. They were the same or worse than that person who just came in. And all of a sudden, now they get the nerves of looking at that person different. And it's like, how, how dare you how dare when God saved your soul? Yes. He brought you in, kept you, but you can't keep this person. Right. So people can get it. That's it. I, I love that. That is that one of them. If you, didn't, you, you need to remember the song, it's not going to get but you don't know, Because if we stay in a state of Remembering what God brought us out of, you're always being moved with compassion with somebody else because we are out of memory. But then we still don't want to get caught up in because we forgave somebody. But we got people stabbing, we got people stabbing people all day long. We got people stabbing people in the back. And it's usually a lot of times it's the closest people to you and they go, you know, and but we got we can't get caught up in trying to prove to them that we forgave them. So just because they come in our presence, you have to run to them and tell them and, ooh, hey, hey, to try to prove. 
You, you understand what I'm saying? No, I don't have to do that to say I forgave you because then you still pull it. And just especially remember I said before, if the spots haven't changed, you're still pulling them to your bosom. You're still pulling the snake to your bosom when you know they still a snake. Wisdom. Wisdom says, still love you. Wait for God to work his work. Wait for God to finish the work on you. But I'm not pulling you back into my bosom so that you can do it to me again. I don't want to prove the 70 times 7. You understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to prove it. He better to work. Praise the Lord. I'm listening to everybody, I, I've it, it, it comes to my mind that it, we do have to constantly put our flesh before God because what happens is we get too involved in somebody's route to salvation. Ah, uh, that's true. We get too involved Sometimes because it's time. because it's not because guess what? It ain't just them that gotta come. It's the right. whole. <laughs> right, right. And we just because we don't know if we're the water, the planter, and all that, we gotta to push it as the whole. But we we but because we may know this person and we know what this person is going through, it draws us to their situation. So then we and we're not we're not Captain Saint. <laughs> that can, we got the rope. I got the rope to pull you in. I got the rope to pull you in. And why you put that to that tug of war? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So then, but we do we get so involved and then next you know. The one that's overwhelmed is us. Is us. <laughs> because they really not ready to, they may not be ready to come out mm -hmm. just yet. Mm -hmm. God is dealing with them. But here we are. We just like, we, I mean, we have a prayer services for this one. And you got to get the lady up over there. And then it's not us that leave the night and they're going to be the one. It's God. You know what I'm saying? So we, we have to put somebody. We have to place <laughs> stuff in the right place. Yes, we got we got to place it in the right place because we just get over. We can see a family. We can see a whole family. Guess what happened? Oh, here we go. We gonna get the whole family. <laughs> And then the family is doing like five separate things. Wow! <laughs> and we looking at them like. Oh, I gotta get him. Okay, no, I'm gonna pick him up. I'm gonna pick him up. Oh, no, I'm gonna him out. I'm gonna him out. And next you know, we didn't jack ourselves up so bad. We didn't just because we sit up here and then it's a whole, all these people saying, Yeah, we got super saint. But then here it is God may give you someone. He may lay the person on your heart or your heart. And they may come and see if God do it, He's gonna give it how to deal with it. But well, that's why we gotta have when you say have wisdom, we gotta we gotta place this fast because we just it just and, and I have to say about our family, our family it just got that family help everybody. Yeah. And they just come and, and and we're not gonna turn around away. But we still have to have wisdom in how we direct because then if we don't, we got 10 people over here that's hoping. We'll come say a word. And then, but we so we go on the end of one. And we then and then we spend so much time and we go out to where this one who wasn't doing now I ain't categorizing, but this one that really trying to get God, and this one keep going in and out. We so fast to this one, but this one is really close. Mm -hmm. This one right here probably just need a word of encouragement, mm -hmm. and that may put them on. But we so we go. No. And so I was just listening to what Brother was talking about. You know, the dear, you know, and then you got to you sit up here and when you get it go, you get us so upset. You be ready to, oh my God, you be ready to go off. That's, that's the truth. And tell you, somebody said, boy, if I say this is the thing that ain't going to go off, don't tell the truth to yourself because you want to go off. Even if you walk in a mirror, you go in the mirror, I can't believe. You know, but this is what happens when you get so. Involved when we are supposed to give them the word. Mm -hmm. It's nothing we can do past the word. Amen. And that's that's the real of it. There's mm -hmm. nothing we can do for their inner man past the word. Amen. So if we keep that in mind, that 
the, the, the forgiving probably a little bit more easy. Man, <laughs> let the church say <laughs> amen. <laughs> But that is true. Can we all just come to the conclusion and remember that we're not God? Amen. Amen. That these are not our people. We're just vessels used by God to point them to Him. And so I thank you, evangelist, for we did so. And that's how we end up like that. Because we got so caught up in their deliverance. Yeah. But the thing is, is one thing that that said is because uh, God can be dealing with him. That's where that pride sets in. Right. Is God dealing with my story? <laughs> 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 Gives me to share. 
pearls. My mom taught us don't cash no pearls before knockability. You know what I My pearls. Don't you don't want the pearls and you keep rejecting the pearls. It's time for me to take my pearls and give it to someone that wants them. I don't keep casting. You keep casting. Well, okay. You keep loving. Yeah, always love. You keep loving. But you don't keep casting no pearls. Somebody that's going to bury him and all the good things there. So I'm moving on very quickly. We're going to be closing shortly. Um, so that I love that. I love that. Oh, my goodness. That was, that was one of them. Um, uh, let, me, let me go here. The story took the end to the surprise me. But on the turn, our friend had just forgiven of the unpaid of debt without and finally one of his own servants to hold him. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that I owe. So now laying hands ain't always cool. You know how we lay hands? <laughs> we lay hands, pray, we lay hands. So when you say lay hands, be careful what you're talking about, laying hands, okay? <laughs> he laid hands. He laid hands and said, Pay me that I owe. He ran out of the throne room and sought out a man who owed him a debt. He grabbed his debtor by the throat Ooh, and choked him, demanding he pay back everything he owed. Now, he didn't just, no, I still want my money. He went violent. He went in. Man, talking about forget. He went so in. The second debtor in Jesus' parable only owed his friend a hundred pence. Remember, he owed ten thousand. This one only owed a hundred. And he, he could have paid, it was payable. It says here, which take around three months to pay back. This is even payable. Your debt, you couldn't even, if he gave you a hundred years, you couldn't pay it back. This debt was payable. Okay, it was nothing compared to what he owed. Okay, the second servant responded just like the first servant, and his fellow servant fell down in his field and saw him saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. He got down, crying for his soul, Have patience with me. I'm gonna give it to you. Did the same exact thing, begging for mercy, same exact thing. Now, how much amnesia can you get? The servant refused to forgive. See, hear me? See how you, the choice is here? Jesus, I will never forget what you've done for me. I'll never have a visa. Help me remember so that I remember how I'm treating my brother and my sister based on how you treat me. Here is the unpleasant term. No matter how merciful the king had been to the first of it, his heart was unmoved. He had no compassion. His heart was cold. Okay? He threw his debtor into prison until he could pay the debt. Now, first of all, give me that, that logic. I'm logical. Give me that logic. You throw me into prison so I can't work. Right. But you're going to throw me into prison until my debt is paid. Okay? Uh. He would remain in prison until family or friends. Now you making him put his debt on the family and the friends. He's saying, I'm going to pay you. Give me a little bit more time. You say, I'm going to put you in jail until you pay the debt. So now he got to submit other people to work for him to get his debt paid. While he's in jail instead of allowing him to do what he had to do because he said he Yes. That now that right there in these times right here, you have people that do something similar to that. They can't put you, you know, not put mm -hmm. you there. The thing is, you trying to punish him for what you do. Because mm -hmm. really you mad because you know it to If you didn't have it to loan to have the space, you didn't use wisdom when you know. Mm -hmm. Because when you know. It got you, you have to have <coughs> wisdom to say, I don't have it for me. See, when somebody, if you put it down, 
in many cases where you said that if you were still thinking that, I ain't saying that. But in these cases when there's no verbal understanding, look, I'm learning this to you, but you got to pay this back because this, I don't have this to just give you. But here, when he would put somebody in prison and you know in order for them to pay back, it got to work. But you so mad because you gave it to him, you shouldn't have gave it to him. Mm -hmm. You mad, you put him in prison because you're mad because of what you did. And now you're going to punish him until you satisfy. Mm -hmm. No mercy. That's that, that's that. Here we had that thing of, of my feelings. So I got to. I gotta relieve my feelings. My pride got yes. making me. Yeah. Oh Lord, how dare you? You know what I'm saying? So this kind <laughs> of behavior, it couldn't remain hidden. Some of the king's other servants witnessed. See, see, the king did this good thing. He don't know about it, with him. but other people knew that the king's behavior. Other people knew. So now they're watching. And then looking at for real, you just gonna do that? No, somebody is watching. Oh, I know somebody yeah. knows. And so here, and, 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 and I put in my note, exposed. He got exposed, but God don't like ugly. <laughs> he got exposed, okay? And so doubtless these other servants heard the extraordinary kind. They knew what the king had done. And so then I saw him turn. And be cool to somebody else after someone was just merciful to you. They couldn't believe the hypocrisy and the ingratitude. How could he possibly act that way after all he had been forgiven? How can you? Now that's the, that literally what she's looking at. How can you? And we as saints do look at other saints like that. It's like, how can you be like this? How can you be nasty? How can you do you treat people this way? How can you dog your fellow? Uh, uh, men and women, your sisters and brothers, how can you dock them when Jesus forgave us? How come you're docking them? How come you're talking to people that way? How come you running them down? How come you stabbing them in the back? How come you're doing this when they treated you so well? They treated you good. All they've done was be kind to you. Guess what? You exposed, but somebody else is asking that question. When you the one acting this way, he said, when the king learned, and we know he called it short, when the king learned that the first servant had what the first servant had done, the king was shocked and furious. Then his Lord, after that, he had called him and said unto him, Thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all thy debt, that because thou desirest me, I did it because you asked me. And there's a code in there. So that's a whole complete thought. I did it because you asked. There was no but, nothing. I did it because you asked me. What did Jesus say? I forgave you because you asked me. You came to me. You asked me and I did it for you. Should not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had did on thee? And his Lord was wrong and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Now, mind you, we pulled all that back and say, now you go until you pay. He gave you the same punishment. But this say tormentors. It is saying he put him in jail. He gave it to tormentors. Okay? That's a little upgrade from sitting in jail. Make a phone call to him, can y'all go and, and work for me and pay y'all and give you the low police bail money? The tormentors will, will step up from that, okay? The king summoned the servant to return to the throne room and called him wicked. The forgiven servant failed to show the same kind of mercy uh, to others that he had received from the king. The king said, you should have we treated him as I treated you. You should have had mercy, but because the servant refused to be merciful, he disqualified himself from receiving mercy. Ah, look at that. Look at that. that that's the same thing. It says his unpayable debt was, was his to pay. 
The first servant was thrown into prison himself until he could pay all his debt. But everyone knew he was dying in prison. He was going to be in prison for life. But the, the sign that I love, it said it disqualified him from receiving. If you don't receive nothing else from this lesson, you can't forgive. You disqualify yourself from being forgiven. Ah, glory. It's just that simple. You can't show mercy. You're disqualifying yourself from receiving it. And guess what? You gone for it. It's going to happen. It's going to come. We must forgive us as He forgave us. You get that word. Uh, so likewise, shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. And forgiving God requires us to forgive others. Okay? Uh, and if we refuse to forgive, not just struggle, but refuse. We're not talking about struggling. Because now we remember we talked about is how hard it is. We're not talking about how hard it is. We're not talking about it's like, wow. We're talking about refusing. I've heard people literally refuse and say, I won't. I'll never. I've heard people literally use those words. Okay? Refuse to forgive. Jesus explicitly taught that God will not forgive us. Not, not the fact that it's easy, it's the fact that you refuse. He taught us to pray, and now we're talking about and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debt. For if you forgive me and their trespasses, the heavenly Father will forgive you. So going down the further, always be willing. That's what our spirit man needs to do. Even when it's difficult, be willing. It says here, I say not unto thee, but to seven times seven. So we have that proof. It can be even revolting or offensive to us to think we need to forgive. It says, we depending on sin committed against us, depending on things committed against us, it's hard for you to like, really but be willing. Okay? This is difficult. I'm going down. Good. I'm almost to the end. Jesus was showing us how God views the situation. Our being born and seen in the cumulative sins we have committed against him by breaking his law are greater than someone's sins against us. If God forgave us, we must forgive others. Otherwise, we disqualify ourselves. And we said that earlier. God always has benefits. Benefits come to us when we forgive. The benefit of being forgiven is being that's the benefit of being of forgiving others is because we can be forgiven. That's a benefit. And then being a natural, based on the studies, there are more benefits. We improve mental health, less anxiety and stress, lower blood pressure, fewer issues with depression. Those are the natural benefits. Okay? But these are not why Jesus commanded us to forgive. He commanded us to forgive because God has forgiven us. This is the right reason for forgiveness. No more than that. But because I've been forgiven, I must forgive. No more, no less. You know, you can have all the reasons, you can list all the reasons, but because God forgave me, I must be willing to do it. I was looking at each one of my messages, and I'm getting ready to close with a couple of messages. And, and, and heal some of the things that we were talking about. Forgiving someone does not mean that what the person did was okay. And in extreme situations, such as abuse, consult the proper leaders or authority, yet the Lord is calling us to forgive, to release debt, and to put the person in his hand. You release the debt from you and give them to God. You may not be able to imagine how you could forgive a particular person, but if you commit to forgive, God will help you through his spirit to do it. He will strengthen you in the journey of forgiveness until it's finished. So there's a journey. Because you forgive instantly, but the journey of the healing and the trusting 
okay? He is going to help you until that part is finished. Forgiving is not pretending the wrong didn't happen. We can't live in this false thing of they didn't do anything to me. You better live in that reality. Neither is forgiving allowing someone to continue willfully and maliciously harm us. Forgiveness is an act of the will. I'm willing to do it. It happens when we consciously decide to cancel someone's debt, which means we will not hold the wrong over the person, actively seeking to punish or turn others against the person. And that's what we have in today's society. Because other, you know, somebody don't like you, so now they want to turn the whole world against you. So now you feel vindicated in the fact that I don't like you, so nobody else is going to like you. It says, so... When we forgive, we decide, and we got the choice again. We decide we will not retaliate or replace someone for what he or she has done. In doing this, we make space for God to avenge us. See, so we 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 make we uh, we give the ability to be forgiven, and we make space for God to fight the battle. Okay, if He thinks we need to be avenged, as if He thinks the battle needs to be fought. Okay, sometimes it's walk away. Forgiveness gives God permission to fight our battles. See, these are little nuggets, okay? Let's not think of forgiveness as a feeling, especially at first. It's deeper than ceasing to feel angry, resentful, or hurt. It will likely be a long time before we can feel that way. Think of forgiveness as a commitment to act or not to act. Over time, God will change our feelings. And they will soften and not sting quite as much. It may take a long time, perhaps a year or longer, but God can work on our hearts as we seek to obey Him. And God will hear our hearts, and we will be able to think of the person who hurt us at without feeling hatred, anger, or bitterness. The sting will be gone. God will remove the sting, not the memory. You can remember what somebody has done without it having a sting. Yes. Choosing to forgive takes a moment, instantaneous, suddenly, because we got to be willing. But the process takes time. Did we just say that? We can know when the process is complete. We have fully forgiven when we no longer tell our story as the victim trying to get people to sympathize with us. And turn against the person who hurt us. When we still be, we're not acting as a victim and trying to turn other people against so we're vindicated. Okay? Further, we know we have forgiven when we no longer get pleasure or satisfaction when we hear something negative has happened to the person. Forgiveness is not an option. Remember, we're doing it because Jesus forgave us. It's a command. If you hurt, if you've been hurt, forgive. Don't wait until the person comes to you seeking to make everything right. That may never happen. Our Lord commands us to freely forgive. Forgive without limits. That Brother Troy was talking about. You can't dictate how, you know, in all the all these stipulations of forgiveness. Forgive without limits. The one who forgave our unpayable debt calls us to forgive the debts others owe us. And he stands ready to empower us and bless us as we seek to obey him by forgiving others. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise God. But this is a lesson that we needed to do to the end of that because these nuggets matter. These nuggets matter. These nuggets matter. We release some powerful things. We release God being able to fight a battle. We release God forgiving us. We give him the authority of our lives when we do it. Okay? So God bless you. We're going to, you know, it's Father's Day, so Pastor is on break on today. So we're going to, to stand and get ready to be dismissed. And we will be back in service. Give us until about 1140. And we'll be back at 11 40 11 o'clock. We'll be back in service. All those that are online, come back and join us. Happy Father's Day to you. That any month is one, hear me now or hear me later. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let the words of my mouth and the words of my and the meditation of my heart be accepted in my sight. 
Oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. God bless you.